Our liturgy for today is Responsive Prayer 2, beginning on page 285. And our hymn is hymn number 425, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 18, 6 through 7, and 16 through 20. In my distress, I called upon the Lord to my God. I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came to him. It reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked, and the foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. He sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord dwelt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanliness of my hands, he rewarded me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In my distress... I called upon the Lord. To my God I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests had consulted with the elders and the scribes, and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast, he used he now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner, for whom they asked, and among the rebels in prison, who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man? that you call the king of the Jews. And they cried out again, Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released, them, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, 
He delivered Him to be crucified. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Release for us Barabbas. Release for us a murderer that we might become murderers. Release Barabbas. Crucify the Christ. Crucify the one who calls himself the great I Am. What shall we do with the King of the Jews? Crucify him. But Barabbas? Barab like the Barabbas? The one that murdered many, many people? The, the, the largest scoundrel? that there is, you would prefer Barabbas to be released into your midst to continue to kill, steal, and destroy. And this man who you believe 
usurps your authority, you would prefer him to die. That's his great crime. I'm saying that he is the Lord. But Barabbas? I mean, I, I know that there's a lot of sermons that will be preached saying, we're all Barabbas, and uh, we're released, and uh, Jesus is the one who pays the price. But the reality is, Barabbas is the scapegoat. It's not that we're Barabbas, but he does embody symbolically our sin. He does embody symbolically that there was someone who was in chains, someone who was a murderer, someone who was deserving of deaths, you know, sinners like us, in bondage. And they brought him up and there was Barabbas and there was Christ and they asked the people, who would you prefer to have among you? And they picked the symbolic nature of our sin, Barabbas. I don't think that Pilate was keen on the idea of having Barabbas go around in the midst of the people. And I know that Pilate's wife wasn't a big fan of having Christ crucified. She wanted him to have nothing to do, wanted Pilate to have nothing to do with Christ. And yet, we have the two goats, right? We have the goat who would be sacrificed and the goat who would be, who would have the sins placed on the people and then he would be released into the desert, just like it says in the Old Testament. Except, not quite. See, the, Barabbas may be the symbol of our sin. He may be the, the symbol of the one who is in, in bondage. But Christ isn't. He isn't the symbol of our sin. He isn't the representative of our sin. It's not a story of how Christ how Christ, uh, or how Barabbas represents our sin, and Christ represents the goodness in us, and all, and all of that kind of nonsense. No, Christ doesn't represent our sin, even if Barabbas does. Christ becomes our sin. Christ takes unto himself our sin, like the woman with perpetual bleeding as she reached out and touched the hem of his garment. Her bleeding stopped. Power went out of Christ and her sin, the sin that caused the ailment, went into Jesus. That's what happens for us. All of our sin, our sin is not symbolic. It is absolute rot. Our sinful nature is disgusting. It is harmful. It deserves to be burned apart in hell. And so Christ doesn't symbolize that. Christ embodies it into his own self. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that that sin could be crucified finally, once and for all. No more goat, no more scapegoat. It ended. The buck stopped with Christ and him crucified. And that's the thing. Christ Jesus, in His death and in His resurrection, released all of us who are baptized and believe from our bonds of sin, our bondage. Like Barabbas, we were cut loose of our sin, of our bondage. And for every person that Christ cut loose from his from their bound from their bounds, they are actually rebound. 
to Christ. Because when it came time for Christ to be bound, when it came that time, Christ remained bound and spoke not a word. When the time came to release Christ, the crowd chose a murderer instead of Jesus. And so now we who are baptized and believe our bounds are broken in the sense that we are no longer tethered and tied to the devil. We are rebound to Christ, the one who would remain bound until crucified and died and was buried. Christ, who could have broke His own bondage, remained bound so that we would be tethered forever in Him and our bounds of sin would be broken forever. Thanks be to God. Even in this season, even in the midst of this horrible virus and, and even in the midst of all of the franticness uh, and, and all of the insanity that, that's, that's going on in, throughout the world, never, ever forget this. Your bonds of sin are broken. Which means you will die in this life, but you, were not, you will not die the everlasting death of hell. You should, but Christ saw fit to die for you. And so while you may be hanging on by a thread, understand that that thread tethers you to Christ the crucified, died, and was buried. Ascended on the third day, rose again on the third day, ascended into heaven. It sits at the right hand of God. At the right hand of power. And all of a sudden, that thread that you're hanging on by, it's actually a bound. It's a bondage. It's unbreakable. Because it's tethered to Christ's own veins where His blood poured out for you. And on that tether, His blood is upon us, upon our children. And for that, we are free in this world. Free to live and free to die. But we are bound in faith. There is no free will in faith. And that is the most beautiful bondage that there ever can be and ever will be. Thanks be to Christ. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. You may kneel or stand to pray. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. 
he, is, he, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, and the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The versicles. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation evermore say, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. O Lord, Jesus Christ, you released many from their bondage to sin, death, and the devil as the healer of the nations. But when it came time for you to release you, the crowd chose a, chose a murderer instead. Through our crucifixion with you in the waters of holy baptism, may we continually be released from our sins as we confess you to be our everlasting King. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty, most merciful God, in this earthly life we endure sufferings and death before we enter into eternal glory. Grant us at all times to subject ourselves to your holy will and to continue steadfast in the true faith to the end that our lives that we may know the peace and joy of the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead and of the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, your thoughts are not our thoughts, and your ways are not our ways. In your wisdom you have permitted this disastrous pandemic to befall us. We implore you, let not our hearts, let, let not the hearts of your people despair, nor our faith fail us, but sustain and comfort us. Direct all efforts to attend the injured console the bereaved, and protect the helpless. Bring hope to the healing that we may find relief and restoration through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me of all of my sins where I have done wrong. Graciously keep me this night, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and defend us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.